Hello and welcome to the video. This is the latest video in the Antenna Lab series. Remember that? The Antenna Lab series, for those of you that haven't been with the channel in a while, was one that started a couple of years ago now, where it attempts to explain some of the complexity of how antennas work uh, and kind of runs through lots of different tests to actually test whether or not some of the perceived wisdom uh, is actually true. And this time it is about testing all of these antennas. Now in lockdown 3.0, uh, I had a little bit of time, so I collected up all these antennas and put them in a box and shipped them off to Menace RC. Greg over there has a very sophisticated rig for testing these, and I was just interested to see how they actually performed on the bench. So in this video, what I'm going to show you is the results of those tests, specifically the trace from his uh, Spectrum Analyzer. And the way the spectrum analyzer works is it's sending a signal up into the antenna, lots of different frequencies, and measuring how well the antenna performs. So let's just very quickly take a look at a trace, at a sample trace, just to remind ourselves of how we actually read these graphs, because it has been quite a while since we have been looking at them. So jump on the computer and look at an example one. Now this is the trace from a Menace RC Thrasher antenna. Uh, this is one of their ones that's made from a couple of PCBs uh, together. And that's a really good way of constructing an antenna because it means that the PCB traces uh, can be very, very accurately aligned. Now, this middle line here is the 5.8 gigahertz line. This is the uh, frequencies that we're using in analog FPV and these two outer notes here this little red triangle with a one above it is at the lower end of the frequencies that we're using and the green triangle here is at the upper end of the frequency range that we're using so in between these two triangles is what you're typically going to be using if you're flying analog FPV on 5.8 gigahertz now the way it works is this line this yellow line here is the VSWR line. And the way it works is that the lower the line, the better the performance of the antenna at that particular frequency. We don't want it at any point to go above a VSWR of 2.0 in between these two outer limits of what that we would use as frequencies for analog FPV. So the nice thing about this particular trace is we can immediately tell a couple of things about this Menace Thrasher antenna. First of all is that it is well below the 2.0 and actually well below 1.5 VSWR for the majority of the range that we would use. The best performance is just below the 5.8 gigahertz range. So this would be an antenna that would perform very well across the entire range. The best performance on this is going to be at this point. Uh, but this is a nice antenna, and this is typically what you see with an antenna, and this is what we mean by an antenna being tuned. Its best performance, the lowest VW, VSWR range, is in here. So now we have refreshed our memory of what that looks like, let's go through some of the other traces for some of these other antennas. Now, a couple of caveats before we get into that. This is a single antenna under test. It's an antenna that isn't necessarily fresh out the packet. It's one that I've had in my antenna box for a while, and it's been shipped to Greg as well, so who knows what kind of damage has ensued. Now, Greg's test equipment is horrendously expensive. It's very high performance, but a single antenna shouldn't be taken as indicative performance of all the antennas in that range or from that manufacturer. So with that caveat in place let's look at the traces for the other antennas on test so the next antenna that we'll look at is this speedy b antenna and you can see here that the trace is a little bit similar to the one we've just looked at but different in a few fundamental places the first of all is that unfortunately at the very high end of the frequency range that we would use in modern FPV, it's well above the 2.0 level. In fact, the upper VSWR is coming in at about 2.38. The center frequency for this 
is about 5.743 gigahertz so a little bit low uh, and the performance of this antenna is fine but in those higher frequencies it's well above the VSWR of 2.0 so wouldn't be ideal for people who fly at the bands and frequencies up there. Next one is the Lollipop uh, from Foxier. This is the small diameter one. Uh, this is a really cute trace. It's interesting. Well under a VSWR of 2.0 for the entire range that we're going to use. The lowest uh, frequency, the best frequency or kind of center frequency, I guess you call it, is 5.906 gigahertz so a little bit high but for the frequencies above 5.8 up to the top end of what you use for analog FPV this antenna would perform really really well but the entire trace is under a VSWR of 2.0 so this isn't bad performance at all Next trace is the Quantum Pagoda. This again is constructed in a similar way to Menace RC. It's the idea of using copper traces on PCBs as the elements within the antenna that give you very close tolerances which allow you to get a very, very finely tuned antenna. Again, all of the trace is well under a VSWR of 2.0. In fact, almost all of it is under a VSWR of 1.5. Center value on this is a little bit high, uh, 5.856 gigahertz, uh, but this is not a bad performing antenna at all. And this is typical of the Pagoda style and why things like the Menace antennas work so well. Next antenna to look at is this antenna here. Now this is the kind of stuff that we were all using back in the very early days of FPV. And hopefully this trace shows that if you are, throw it away. This trace is horrific. There isn't any kind of tune to speak of, and uh, it is. Uh, there's no real sense of frequency, really. You could say it's uh, tuned about 5.8, but you could probably say it's tuned about any point on the graph, to be fair. Uh, the uh, low end, uh, the lower VSWR is 2.48, the higher VSWR is 2.53. Now this is a left hand circular polarized antenna but it does just show that these antennas are really old school now and there's a reason why pretty much everyone I know has thrown these all in the bin and moved on to something like the Pagoda style. Next antenna to look at is the larger Lollipop from Foxier. Now this is not a bad trace. Again, well under a VSWR of 2.0 across the entire board. However, the center frequency of this is relatively low. It's right towards the lower end of the available frequencies to us as analog FPV pilots. That's 5.654 gigahertz. It's only at the very top end that it kind of squeaks above a VSWR of 2.0. It actually goes to 2.08. But this would be a good antenna to use if you're going to be using it more towards those lower frequencies around the 5.6 gigahertz range. Next antenna is the Foxia Tall antenna. Uh, this has a right angled connector uh, at the bottom of it, which can sometimes introduce some additional losses. But this is what the trace looks like. Again, not bad at all. All under a VSWR of 2.0. It's actually pretty much bang on the VSWR of 2.0 at the lower end of the range. At the higher end of the range, it's a VSWR of about 1.4. Center tune is just off the middle at 5.81 gigahertz. But this is not a bad trace. It's interesting to see the tr how the trace behaves above the frequencies that we would normally use for analog FPV. The Lumiere AX2 is next. Uh, this isn't as good a trace as we would probably want to see. Again, this is indicative of a single antenna under test. Don't take this uh, as the performance of all the antennas, but we can see here that unfortunately, this antenna has a VSWR of 1.47 at the uh, lower end of the available frequencies. Uh, but at the higher end, it is 2.69. The center frequency for this is 5.544 gigahertz, which is outside the range 
of the ones we'd actually use for analog FPV. So unfortunately, this is tuned a little bit too low. If we had that center point moved up so that it was around the 5.8 gigahertz, this would be a cracking antenna. So this could be due to some kind of tolerance or movement of the active elements within the antenna itself. This is the antenna from Furious FPV. Uh, again, 5.8 is in the middle. Unfortunately, this has kind of the opposite uh, trace to the one we've just looked at, the AX2. This has a very high VSWR down at the 5.645 megahertz, the lower end. It's a whopping 2.49, and it's a nice 1.37 VSWR uh, up at the higher end. That does mean the center frequency is right up there at 6.144 gigahertz, way out of the range that we would need. Like this would have to be uh, tuned so that that peak that's up there, uh, just above where it says 1600 on this graph, was kind of down uh, and, and kind of sat around the 5.8. Well, fortunately, this is an antenna that's going to perform on the 5.8 to 5.945 megahertz frequencies reasonably well but as you go towards the lower frequencies the 5.645 megahertz uh, you're really going to start to get some quite serious losses last antenna on test is the little rush cherry uh, i quite like these antennas this is an interesting trace that shows that it actually performs really nicely. At the lower end, at the, the lower VSWR is 1.47. The higher is under 2.0, it's 1.79. The center frequency is 5.743 gigahertz. So just a little low, but this would perform very well over the range, but actually would perform better uh, from the lower frequencies uh, up to you know the 5.85 or something like that would be nice as you get towards the upper frequency range of 5.945 megahertz it is going to uh, start to lose a little bit but all the trace comfortably under a VSWR of 2.0 so the performance across the entire spectrum is actually pretty good so there we have it, that's the results of the test. What it clearly shows is the antennas that are made out of things like PCB traces, so things like the Pagoda style antennas, uh, actually tend to be tuned pretty good. The length of the elements and the distance of those elements and the orientation can be very, very closely monitored. It does also show that if you're using one of those old fashioned clover leaves with the little wires sticking out the side, uh, it's probably time to throw that away and invest in a modern antenna. A well-made modern antenna will perform rings around that old stuff that we were using five or six years ago. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.